pool out of me. Yeah. He's a I'm going to mute everyone except for you. Okay. Um, so, oops, mute that. Okay. Marlo, you're not muted. Perfect. Um, so I am excited to have Marlo on tonight. She is, she's full of energy. She's inspirational. She is, she's just the perfect person for the talk of motivation. So I don't know how long, Marlo, how long have you been at Cincy? 10 years in February. 10 years. No, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but Marlo's brought a lot of life to Cincy. And if you're around her at events or if you get to see her at events, go give her a hug. Um, she's awesome. And she just brings really good, positive energy. And she spoke recently at our Superstar Director Summit. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize how adventurous. I mean, I should have assumed <laughs> Marlo was adventurous. But she's going down these, you know, like, I don't even know, 50 feet drop in these canoes and just crazy. So um, Marlo's going to talk about motivation tonight. I'm really excited. So Marlo, do your thing. If you want Q and A at the end, or I guess people can ask questions at the end or however you want to do it. Um, it's, it's your show tonight. Okay. Well, I'll just tell you, thank you, Jacqueline. That was really kind of you. Um, and I like to kind of learn from each other. So I'm totally fine with People, I mean, you could take people off mute or we can do it from the chat because um, I think it's really important to share experiences and to learn from each other um, because we're all in this together, right? I mean, that is one thing I love about Cincy is the, the um, community that it brings. And um, anyways, so just go from there. Um, but I will tell you, I when I started at Cincy 10 years ago, interesting enough, I was... Um, hired as a fitness instructor and trainer and <laughs> for employees. And then it quickly evolved into, um, they said, we want to bring wellness and self-development to the consultants. And I was like, I am more than happy to do that. I was super excited. And then they put me on the consultant development and training team. And it just has been evolving ever since. And I absolutely love it because I get to follow my passion and I get to interact with you guys. So that's awesome for me. Um, so like Jacqueline said, my topic today is on motivation. It's motivation to discipline. And I'm going to start with motivation. Um, and I, like I said, I love interaction from you guys. And I like us to learn from each other. So if you have paper, pen handy, or you can use the chat, or you can shout out, um, whichever, I just like to be able to learn from each other because I think that's really important and from each other's experiences. So first question I have to you guys is what is motivation to you? So you can use the chat or if you want to take people off um, mute, come off mute. I'll go first. Okay. Uh, motivation to me is something that makes me want to get moving something that gets me excited about doing something. I love it. I love it. It's exactly what I was looking for. Katie said creativity, being able to attend my kids' sports, staying at home with my daughter, money. Yeah. Anybody else want to share what is motivation to them? Being pre present for my kids and loving my living my life by design. I like it. So motivation is is like exactly what Roseanne said. So it's something, someone or something that you see or hear that motivates you to take action. Right? Um, it causes us to behave differently. So motivation is tricky because it it different things motivate us. Right? So each of us are very different. So what motivates me might not might be something that's different that motivates you. So it might be money for James, or it might be material things for Jacqueline. And I don't know, I'm just throwing things out there. But different things motivate us, like inspirational videos, inspirational quotes, motivational images. There's tons of things that motivate us, right? And of course, one of the big players right now of motivation is social media. It's in front of us and it and it can be looked at motivating us to engage or maybe not engage in a particular mm -hmm. act. It can be a great motivator for people. It can be a great motivator for you and your business and your life. 
So let's talk about motivation in your life for a minute. I'm going to use exercise as an example because it's been in my life for a long time. And it's sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad for people. They're like, yeah, I don't want anything to do with it, which is fine. I'm just using it as an example today. So if I were to ask you in your situation right now, what would motivate you to start exercising tomorrow? What would that be? Illness. Illness. Interesting. Okay. Anybody else? An event coming up. I want to look good. Oh, there you go. That's always always one that comes up for people. Feeling uncomfortable in my clothes or in front of others. Swimsuit season. That's a big trigger. I get motivated when I book trips. Live longer. Guaranteed results. Absolutely. Motivation to make makes me think of something how wait, thinks of how much I want something. Yeah. Seeing myself in a picture. Can I just say on that one note, when I speak at world tour and I get pictures back from people, it's usually a good motivator for me. <laughs> good or bad. I'm like, you know, it's just one of those funny things, but what to motivate us to start exercising, there's lots of different things, right? So it can be someone in shape, a video of someone saying that if you do these five steps, you're going to look like them. So do these motivators typically keep you going? Do you think? Roseanne, you're saying no. Do they keep you going? No, no? because when it's no longer swimsuit season, then I, then I get to be fluffy, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, totally. Exactly. <laughs> So, and that's the thing, right? It is definitely motivation is short term. Anything else? We just, we just have to get our extra coating for winter, right? So fluffy in the winter, clothes shed, pounds have to shed. <laughs> yes, yes, totally, totally. So motivation can keep us going sometimes, sometimes not. It sometimes stops us. Um, I don't want to say stops us, but it, it is usually short term. So when I was growing up, one of the biggest motivators that I think in my life was my mom. Moms always have a big influence, right? For good or for bad sometimes. Um, but for exercising for me, she was a big motivator. Um, I, those of you that have been to boot camp, you may have heard me share this story. But I would see her in the morning, early morning, that she'd be jumping on this little tiny um, trampoline. And she would be doing her little exercise regimen. Um, I didn't really realize it then as much as I do now, how much of a motivator it was for me throughout my life as a tool to be strong throughout the day. I'm not just talking strong physically because my mom wasn't like this big hardcore exercise person. She was a home economics teacher, but I recognized that she was motivating me almost subconsciously to take care of myself, to be strong mentally because she was a a teacher so she needed to be mental, mentally strong and she also wanted to be physically strong we had an ice business growing up and I would see her you know making bags of ice and we would be tossing them into the freezer into the truck and then we'd have to unload them at the vendors and seeing her be strong in these different ways motivated me to take care of myself and to have better health so she was a key player in my motivation. She motivated me without ever saying anything. Now, there are definitely different times in my life where I was motivated by different things. Video, TV. I remember watching, um, oh my gosh, it was one of the Terminators. I'm really going to date myself here, which was kind of funny because I'm focused around exercise just for this one topic for the moment. But I remember seeing the woman that was the Terminator mom, or well, I can't remember her name, but I remember seeing her doing pull-ups and she was ripped. And I was like, oh, I want to be just like her. Um, but it was short term. I mean, I thought, oh, that lasted for about a week, but it, it's not what moved me in that direction. It could have catapulted me to changing my habits, but it did not move me. Um, I also remember when I was back in college, I decided to hang a picture of this girl in a bikini that that was what was going to motivate me to eat better. So I put her on my fridge. Um, did it last? It didn't. And pretty soon it just became a topic of why did I have this half naked person on my fridge all the time? 
anyway, so she came down a little while later. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is motivation is important. It's what can catapult us. It can be the catalyst to launch us forward, but it might not be what's going to help you to stay motivated. So I want you to think of a time when you felt good or you succeeded at something, okay? So think of, is it when you promote a director? I want you to think what motivated you? What was your motivation to get there? Put it in the chat or you can come off um, mute. I think it's just that euphoric feeling of doing it that just, I'm a big like competitive person. So I grew up doing competitive gymnastics and just that discipline and just that rush. So I, I love to work out because I love the feeling after you're done. Mm. And so I feel like for me, like goals, when I hit director, I remember when I hit superstar director very well. I mean, I just remember that feeling of I can do anything, you know, mm. I just did that. I can, I can do anything that I set my mind to. And so for me, it just hitting milestones and accomplishing promoting things like that, it just further showed me that I am capable of really big things. Yeah, I love that. And you bring out a couple points. So a lot of us, when we talk exercise, we get addicted to kind of that um, endorphin kick, right? But I also love what you said is kind of that adrenaline feeling when you hit those goals that can be your motivator, right? Um, someone said, my littles are always proud of me when I'm going to the gym. So that is motivating. I, Kids are a big deal. I mean, when they recognize you're doing something well, they can keep us motivated. Um, when I was a diehard gym goer, this is someone that's sharing. I couldn't stop going because I was afraid that if I missed a day, I would miss another. So I just kept going every single day for over a year. Yeah, I mean, and we can keep that going as well. It's what motivates us, right? So we all need to pay attention to what individually motivates us because that's what's going to catapult us. Again, I want to focus that it's on each one of us to take that ownership of it because we want it. We want to recognize that. So that will be our catalyst. So now if you could experience, if, or if you could take that experience of that, of what, so if you could take that experience and sum up motivation in one word, what would it be? So think of whatever it was, if you hit director, and that experience, and you could take that motivation in one word, what would it be? Was it, would it be like fighter? Would it be dream? Oh, Ryan, I like that unstoppable. What would be your one word? I want everybody to come up with one word. You could say fearless, lead, success, growth, strength. I like that. Brave, that's a good one. So I want everybody to have their word, fighter, determination. Absolutely. Okay, I'm hoping blessed. Oh, nice, I like that. Okay, so I want everybody to have their word and table it off to the side, okay? All right, so what's next? So if the motivation is our launching pad, what will help you to succeed? Takes us to our next word, discipline, right? So motivation is that match to light the fire, but if we don't have the discipline, we will quickly burn out before the fire has even started. So what is discipline? So discipline is the action or inaction that it's regulated to be with a particular system. It's commonly applied to human behavior, right? That we wanna to change to our environment or change to a situation it's that practice of training people to obey rules. It's a code of behavior, if you will. So why do you think it's important to be disciplined in something? Opening it up back up to you guys. Why is it important to be disciplined? I always say, tell my team too, it, it takes doing the small things consistently to get the big results that you want. And so to me, that's discipline. You know, you can't expect to hit a direct, you know, hit director overnight. You have to be doing the daily small things and, and like, you know, like discipline yourself to do those things that maybe seem worthless, 
like yeah. handing out 50 samples, going to the gym, skipping the candy bar, that kind of thing. To me, that's discipline, but it's doing all those little small things to get the big results. Cause it's not just one thing. It truly is a lot of, um, self-control for sure. It is. It is. Thank you. Yeah. You won't get anywhere without it. Kelsey, I love that you said that. Um, it helps us reach our goals, consistency. It helps reach your goals, stay focused and determined. So it is, it's so important that we stay disciplined because it helps us exactly to what you say. It helps us to stay on track. It helps us to reach our goals. I use exercise because it's visual. Um, usually when you see the difference, I remember when I very first started um, teaching fitness and I remember it was like cardio, cardio, cardio. And then probably, gosh, 10 years into it, I remember they came out with this thing called endurance lifting. And it was basically lifting small weights, um, but more repetitions. And all of a sudden I started my, seeing my body change. And all these people that were in my classes, I started seeing their bodies change when they added weights. But it was very visual to see those small, simple acts of people being disciplined of changing their outcome. And that's what we're talking about with this. So one of the people, I, when I was doing a little research on this, I was, came across an article from the Wall Street Journal, Journal about how to develop discipline and find motivation. And there was just a little article in there from Simone Biles. Um, you guys know who she is, right? The gymnast with Olympics. Um, and she said that she made a habit of setting goals each year. She said her mom always made her sit down every year at the beginning of each year and write down her goals so she could keep track of what she needed or wanted in the gym and out of the gym. She said, I had a checklist and it was a great feeling to check off that list every day or every week. But she said it was discipline in her daily work that helped her check off that list. So developing discipline involves creating good habits. I mean, I know we talk a lot about this with Sensi about creating those good habits, but at the end of the day, it's making sure that we do those habits, right? It's it's really disciplining ourselves, those little small and simple steps that will help us control our impulses and control our emotions to better ourselves. If you had good, good habits, it will help you stay on track. But one of the first steps is setting goals, like just going back to Simone, the gymnast, to help us stay focused. So I want you to come up with one thing. I know you guys are doing these trainings every week. So I want you to come up with one thing that you're going to work on this week. So pick one goal. It could be talking to 10 people this week about Cincy, or it could be setting up two parties this week. I just want everyone to pick one thing that you would share, um, one goal that you're going to work on this week. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Maybe not. Party booked, recruiting, recruitment, set up an event, getting two newbies certified. Woo. I'm talking to people this week. I have to do that. I love it. Perfect. Uploading my calendar with events, recruiting, lots of recruiting. Recruiting is key. Touching back with all my maybes. Yeah, maybes, man. You got to get those maybes. I like that. Okay. So let's take it to the next step. We've set a goal, right? We've got that out there. Now we want to create discipline. So if your goal is to talk to two people to Cincy this week, what can you do to help you be more disciplined to make that happen? So was James Clear that came, my gosh, was it two years ago? It was two or three years ago. He talked about stacking habits. I know Jason's talked about this at the leadership call. I know you guys have heard that. Take a habit, stack it on something else. So you can stack a habit, something that you're already doing. Whoa, my light got a little flickery. And you can create a new habit on top of that. Um, so one of the things, so I'm going to give you an example. So if one of your habits was you're going to talk to, say, two or three new people this week, stacking a habit. So think about how many times you look at social media every day. Okay. Out in public. I'm going to add that in there. So every time you're out in public and you go to look at social media, that's your trigger now that you have to talk to somebody about Sensi. Okay. So I want you to think of something that already exists 
that you're now going to stack this habit to become more disciplined to accomplish your goal. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So I want everybody to come up with what they're going to stack their habit on. Um, I'll give you one more example. A couple of years ago, um, I was talking to Deb and she's like, I'd really like to see if you can consolidate your time at the gym time because I work at part of my job at the gym and create more time at the tower. So I was like, you know what? I could probably get up 20 minutes earlier, move some things around so that I could get out of there probably an hour earlier. And one way of doing that, I thought, is I can go to bed 20 minutes earlier, but I can also set my clothes out at night. So I'd put my gym clothes and my work clothes out and I'd have my bags ready to go. So I was stacking that habit so I could start earlier and beat at the tower. I've been doing that for two years now. It's caused me to be more disciplined at night and in the morning to accomplish my goal. Kelsey said, every time I fill my water cup, which is a lot, <laughs> I'm going to reach out to someone. I love that. That's super good, super good time management. Okay. I love it. Anybody else want to share? Still that idea. Yes. Okay. So we want to have one to two actions that are going to help us achieve our goal. You don't ever want to do more than one to two, just because if you do more than that, you're usually setting yourself up for failure and we don't want to do that. All right, Jacqueline, every time I get a receipt, I'm going to hand the sample recruiting back. It. That's good. I like that. Every time I get left on read from an active team, I'm going to talk to someone. Ooh, good, good, good. I love that. These are great ideas. Great ideas. Okay, now I want you to take your one word motivator. Remember what we did? Fighter, resilience, fearless. I want you to take that one word motivator and I want you to put it on a sticky note. I know you probably don't have them in front of you. Kelsey might, but some of you, oh, okay, Amy's got them. I want you to write that motivating word on that sticky note, okay? And if you don't have it in front of you, make yourself a little note that you're gonna take that motivational word and you're gonna write it on your sticky note. And I want you to put it in three places tonight, okay? You're gonna put that motivation word in three places tonight. Because remember, the motivation is what lights us. It's what cat is our catalyst that's gonna get you going. So it can be on your bathroom mirror, it can be in your car, wherever you're gonna be, on your refrigerator, wherever you're gonna see it, that's gonna be your catalyst, okay? Post it where you can see it multiple times. We want you to have the motivation in front of you so it keeps reminding you to shoot for your goal each day. And then the next step, you're going to write down what time of day you're going to practice your new goal. Now, some of you it might not be anything because you tied it to an action and that's okay, which I love because I think that, man, that's just going to be a trigger every time. Yes, wallpaper. I love that. That's a great idea. Okay, so if you didn't have a trigger that's an action, I want you to write what time of day you're going to practice your new action of discipline. Okay, so it could be like for me, mine was at night setting up my clothes. So I knew it was going to be around 10 o'clock at night. So make sure you write down your time of day when you're going to practice your new action. Okay. Okay. Everybody's got that. That should be fairly easy, right? So I want you to remember discipline is a skill. So, and a skill has to be developed into a routine. There is power in a routine. You guys know that. There is power in developing a skill. And remember to be kind to yourself because it takes time, right? To develop that skill over time. It doesn't happen overnight. Just like Jacqueline said, small and simple tasks will affect your outcome. They'll affect your behaviors. They'll affect your decisions. And those small and simple acts will have bigger effects in your life. So when you set your motivation to catapult your discipline, over time, your skills will develop and your outlook on things will completely change. Like instead of wanting to stay in that nice, cozy, warm bed in the morning, <laughs> you'll find it's much more appealing to get your day going and focus the time that you can still do that. But you want to be able to have that feeling of going, no, I see the outcomes are bigger rather than just rolling over and hitting the snooze button. 
So regardless of what goals you've set, your life will be better off when you choose to be more disciplined. So the sooner you start, the sooner you will reap the rewards. And that's all I have for you guys today. I can open it up for questions or any comments that you guys have want to share. Marla, don't they say that you have to do something consistently for, is it like 30 days to create a habit? Yes. Now it used to be like 15 to 20 days, but you know what? I'm like, I think it's different for everybody. Some people will just take off and go, but I'm like, it used to be like the three weeks. Okay. Then it's going to start happening. That's part of the reason um, I created those wellness challenges for 30 days that I'm like, it's a consistent behavior that we hope will implement that into your um, routine. Mm -hmm. That's something good to think about. Cause you know, we'll do something for a week and we'll be proud of ourselves, but it really does take discipline and creating habits over. It's not just a quick fix, you know, longer than a week for it to really start become habitual where we don't even think about it. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. It really does. I, did, um, I was just thinking about <laughs> how it works like in the opposite direction too, because like last um, February, I started like this, not a diet, but like a eating thing that I was yeah. doing and I wasn't eating sugar and I was, you know, doing all these things and I lost like 20 pounds and then summer came and it was like, oh, I look good for my swimsuit. I'm, I'm fine with how I am. And then you start eating all the things, but I, it, it was like, as I ate things, it was like, oh, I can have a cookie right now. You know, I'll yeah. have one cookie today. And then it was like three days later, oh, but I can have two cookies today. And so the same thing happens in the wrong direction too. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. I, I appreciate you saying that because it's so true. If we're not careful, the good that we did, it just backfired and put us right back in the situation that we came. So yeah, yeah definitely keep yep. those motivators moving forward and not backwards. Marla. Yes. I wanted to share something. Um, uh, on routine is so important. And I guess I just never realized it. I mean, I'm much older than most of y'all, but I think over the last year, I've just realized how important a routine is. In fact, last night, my husband said to me, what's wrong? How, you seem so out of sorts. And I said, I hate the weekends. And he's like, what? You hate the weekends? And I said, yes, because I've joined this club Pilates and I work out Monday through Friday two hours every morning, no matter what, nothing comes in its way. I know that's hard to believe, not even Scentsy. I turned down all kinds of stuff because I am committed to it and it feels so good. And then I have such a routine afterwards. I do my deliveries, I go visit, you know, I work, I have a so. but on the weekends, I take a break from my body and I'm out of sorts the whole weekend. Yeah. And I'm almost like in a down in the dumps because it's like, I don't have that structure and it's taken me so long. I thought I always had good structure in my life. I planned my days, I worked my hours, I knew I was intentional. But now that I have that in my life, it's like, I, I said, I'm gonna start working out on the weekends because I need that routine and it feels so much better. And I yeah. actually get depressed where things are just like, do this, let's do this. Somebody's coming over, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, oh, I don't like that. I want my routine. You yeah. know, it's very strange. It's taken me a long time to figure that out. And I feel like I'm more productive in my job because I have set times and I know what to expect of myself and what I can get done. You know, it's, 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 I don't know. It's really weird. And he last no. night me and he was like, that. that is the weirdest thing to say you hate weekends. I said, I do. <laughs> They're just too out of sorts for me. I don't like it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I do like that. I do think our human behavior, I think we do crave routine. I think it feels totally to us for sure. And when you can find a good routine, there's, I think that's a huge motivator to help us stay on track. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. And what a great, I mean, what a great routine. That's awesome. Anybody else? Well, thanks for letting me come on today, you guys. It's been awesome talking to you. I appreciate all the feedback and everybody being willing to share. 
Marlo, we appreciate you. We know you could be doing a lot more than being on here with us tonight or a lot of other things, but we really appreciate it. And I'm going to record this and upload it and I'm gonna, we're going to post it on all of our pages. So I'm sure a lot of people will be watching it after it. So you may get a lot of friend requests on your Facebook page. Um, but we really, honestly, we sincerely appreciate you very much and all that you do for Cincy and kind of the, you know, bright light and the motivation and inspiration that you bring to the training team. So we Thank definitely you. That means a lot. feel that energy. For sure. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you guys have a good night. That Thank will you. End. Yep. That'll end our mindset Monday. Um, next week, Kelsey, do you remember who we have next week? Yes, next week we have Sydney. Yes, Sydney will be here next week. What is she talking to us about? I can't remember right now. I think it's uh, growth mindset. Oh, I think you're right. I think I just. I that. think you're right. <laughs> yes. So we have Sydney next week. It's, yeah, mindset. Sydney's awesome. Yep. She's got a little friend named Emily. She's going to tell us about the lives on her shoulder. Um, so <laughs> make sure. Do you remember that speech? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Yes, I remember. All right. Um, so <laughs> you are interested in what I just said. Make sure you're here next week because I'll have um, Emily or uh, Sydney explain it to you guys. Um, Sydney uh, and Emily. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, Marlo knows. Uh, but Marlo, you're amazing. Um, you guys have a great, great rest of your week. We hope that your mind is right so you can go kick some booty this week and sell some Cincy and um, start getting your goals that we talked about with Marlo. So um, you guys have a great night and thank you for getting on. Bye. Bye.